Welcome back everyone. Thought I'd do a uh, Pleasure Evo spec video. It's been a long time and uh, I've always wanted to do this but uh, haven't had the opportunity. So here we are. I pulled this car out today and I hope to uh, give you a little walkthrough and uh, show you some of the things that I've done over the years. I've owned this car since uh, 2004 roughly. Uh, got it when it was completely stock and uh, did some track days, did some driving on the road, and slowly it morphed. Uh, this is the second roll cage it's had. Uh, this is a bit of an upgrade from the first one, as I'll show you some of the changes. Uh, the rules evolved over time in hill climbing, and uh, some of the safety features have uh, evolved with those rules. So let's start with the outside. I'm going to try to keep this succinct as possible. This could be a long video. Um, right now we're rolling on Ankies. I've got two sets of wheels for this car. Uh, these are my favorite looking Ankies. Uh, these are the WRC Tarmacs. I forget how dirty they are. It's a race car. Uh, I think these are 17 by 9. Uh, they fit real nice on here. Uh, underneath is a big brake kit. Uh, this is uh, Evo 6 to 9 spec um, Brembo F50 calipers. A lot of the suspension has been upgraded for a while. I used Evo 8 style suspension when I had Tyne Super Racings on there. Uh, since then I've moved to RSSP dampers and uh, those are Argentinian. Uh, they're three-way uh, adjustable with a hydraulic bump stop. It's quite a step up from the Tyne. I can show you those uh, in a little bit. Uh, they have a uh, good, good amount of adjustability and I think they're going to be ideal for hill climbs, especially Mount Washington. Um, right now for pads, I don't have very aggressive pads in there. I've found with hill climbing you want a lot of initial bite because they don't get a lot of heat in them. Uh, the studs are ARP, they're extended. The spindles on this car now are EVO 6. Steering rack is EVO 6. Um, so a lot of little changes in there. Uh, the rack's a bit quicker. Um, it's got uh, a bunch of alignment parts in there too to uh, dial the alignment back in after the steering rack change. Here's my number. This has changed over the years. Uh, this is a reserve number for a New England hill climb. I guess you can probably guess where the 63 comes from. Uh, I've tried to keep some of the badging and some of the RFID tags on it over the years. It just shows it's got a lot of history. This car's been racing since like 06 probably. Um, I'll walk around as I talk. Uh, fit, it's placed fish na fifth nationally in uh, Redline Time Attack. Uh, when that was a series a long time ago, it was a big time deal with Busher and AMS racing and some Japanese teams came over. Uh, this car started out in street class and had a couple victories and then um, after that it moved to modified class and had some top threes. So it's been quite competitive. Uh, cars placed second and third uh, at Mount Washington Hill Climbing class. Um, we're going to do that again next summer. It's a very versatile car. It's got a lot of power. Um, here are the, the tires that I'm using now are, are these Rallycross tires. I've been buying takeoffs from Vermont Sports Car. These are pretty good for the track. They overheat really fast. Um, they're incredibly soft. And you can stick your thumb right in them. Um, for hill climb they're great. They warm up really fast and you can just pretty much get after it after one turn or two turns. Uh, these are original fenders but what I've done is welded metal onto them. Uh, increase the, the arch height a little bit and you can see there's some custom stuff holding the bumper on it comes off really quick with this fastener uh, it's really good for service uh, i increase the arch height so i could lower the car but keep suspension travel uh, and then you can see the damper hiding out in there and uh, we've got some swift springs on there now be happy to share spring rates with anybody if they're interested we've got group a style mirrors it's really hard to find now. I don't know why. They're, they're, they're available for Subaru, but not so much for Evo. Let's take a peek inside. So this is the new cage. It basically rests on all the same spots the old cage did in the chassis. Uh, the new cage is a bit more extensive. It's got this sill bar, which is a requirement now for New England Hill Climb, and it should be a requirement everywhere. Unlike the track in Hill Climb, if you slide off the road, uh, you could hit a stump or a tree and uh, get real intrusion from down below. So this is a nice safe, safety item to have. Uh, also the X-bars on the roof. Again, if you go off and something punctures through your roof, uh, you really want to be safe. 
So uh, a little bit more inside, moving from safety. This is uh, a Life uh, F88R ECU. Um, this is famous for being used on that Nissan Delta Wing car. Uh, it's a very popular uh, brand from the UK amongst racers. I've got a barometric pressure sensor up there. And uh, that's for the altitude change at Mount Washington mostly. And uh, we've got these nice uh, custom hoses made by BMRS for the car. They're lightweight. Um, what else? It's a very simplified uh, electrical system. Um, you can see there, there, there's not too much in here. Uh, it's pretty robust. I've got Deutsch connectors pretty much on everything. Um, it could be loomed up a little better, but I've been working on the car. Uh, PC680 battery and a nice little case made by Bill Washburn. Uh, hydraulic handbrake. Oh, it's got a parking mechanism here so you can flick it up and pull out this little tab and click it in here. So right now it's in park, park mode. Uh, it's made by OBP. It's not very expensive. Uh, it works pretty well. Mostly the reason I went to this is so with the big brake kit I can still park the car and have it not roll away. Uh, because with the big brake kit I lost the cable handbrake. Uh, the shift tower. Uh, I've modified the shift tower. I've added in some length here which effectively shortens the throw. These are standard cables. Uh, they operate a dog box. I'll show you in a second. Uh, all these bushings have been upgraded and replaced in here. Uh, it's got rally art bushings, uh, which are kind of hard to find now. Uh, COM port for the ECU is right there, so someone can just come plug in. Uh, we've got some basic switches here. Um, SPA gauge. Different map settings here. Different boost settings. And a mode setting for the gauge. This is a new seat this year. Uh, it's a Momo. I went with that Halo style headrest for extra safety. Uh, it's quite nice. It's uh, comfortable. It's a Safari uh, Daytona XL. And uh, also new harnesses because every time I do a race in this thing, my harnesses happen to be out of date. So you can see the fuel lines run through the back uh, into the trunk and we can, uh, we can go over there in a minute. Not too much else going on in here. It's pretty simple. I'll show you the uh, cockpit in a second. We have one door panel over there, so I don't get cut in a crash. Outside, it's pretty much standard. Again, the rear, the same treatment. Uh, metal arches. This car was repainted when I did these arches. My friend Modestus painted the car. It was super nice of him. He did an awesome job. Cleans up really well. Um, in order to do this modification uh, to the fenders, you have to cut out the door. And uh, luckily I was able to maintain a pretty good arc here. Some splash guards inside here. This is a new addition. Um, it's polyurethane. Keeps water and dirt from going inside the car. Let's see here. Here's the cockpit. It's pretty simple. Um, carbon floor, some grip tape. The pedals are standard. I've reinforced the clutch pedal. Um, there's the pedal stop that I made on the floor. It's still a standard dead pedal. It's all very, very straightforward. This is a nice little addition here. Uh, this is uh, power steering, but it's electronic power steering. Uh, it's from an Opel Cadet. It's a pretty popular thing. There's a guy in Ireland that sells these kits. You can adjust the amount of assist. It's real easy. Um, the idea was I could get rid of the power steering pump and relocate a bunch of stuff in the engine bay that I can show you in a second. Two gauges. Uh, this might turn into a digital uh, cluster soon. Uh, boost. In RPM. I kind of like how simple it looks, but that might be time to, to venture away from that. I'll show you the trunk. It's got a standard fuel cell in it, standard fuel tank. Um, nothing fancy there. Some stuff in the trunk. Um, this has been revised this year, the fuel system. Again, BR, BMRS hoses, um, Bosch Motorsport pump, which is just new this year. Nice big filter. Uh, the filter before was a little small. I didn't want any restriction back there. Uh, everything's real tidy. Uh, run across. Just the braided brake lines. Uh, the strut tops, which are adjustable uh, back here. Um, this is a nice feature. Uh, I can drain the tank. This doesn't live in here. It just isn't here right now. Through this fitting here, you can drain the tank uh, at the end of the season if you don't want to leave fuel in it, uh, which is nice. So yeah, yeah, pretty basic back here. Let's move on to the engine bay. 
For the engine bay, I'm going to introduce an ancient Japanese car video tradition, the finger. So, um, this is iteration, who knows how many, probably at least four of this engine bay. Uh, the Pleasure Evo uses the six bolt gallant block, but it still maintains the Evo head. Um, the gallant head has big ports on it, and uh, that's great, but it's not as stiff and it's a little bit more susceptible to warpage when it gets really hot. Uh, I haven't found any power differences going back and forth, but uh, this engine's lasted a long time. It's been very good. Um, doesn't get a whole lot of use with hill climbs, but after all these years, uh, I think I've been using it since 2011. The compression's perfect. Doesn't leak a drop of oil. Uh, it's probably overbuilt to a degree. Uh, Mount Washington, we ran low boost, which is about 300 wheel horsepower. Um, this thing could make 500, no problem. Um, GT3076 Turbo. Uh, this is a couple generations old now, I'm sure, but it really works well. It does a job, spools up super fast, and it sounds awesome. Um, this is uh, Swain Tech coating on the headers, which is held up real nice. Bill Washburn made these headers for me. Uh, double slip joints down here, it's all sprung uh, to account for a little expansion under heat. One thing I love doing on all the engines I build are these ARP bolts. Uh, they're so good for service. You'll never break one, uh, and, and they, they're just awesome. I use those on a lot of parts uh, in the engine. Uh, tile wastegate, V-band style. Um, the wastegate dumps back into the exhaust. I've had it like that and had it externally dumped. I prefer internal. Um, you don't get exhaust in the cabin that way. Uh, just a number of nice things, but also it comes with a price. It's a little bit harder to build the exhaust that way. Uh, as you can see from a regular DSM or Gallant, I've eliminated that cross water pipe that goes under the under the manifold. I felt like that's always a really silly thing to have, just getting super heated uh, right under there. Uh, instead, this is a very simple loop into the radiator. Uh, swirl pot here. This is just for... Uh, to accommodate how close these two things are together. Uh, and then out the other side, uh, you can see down below, uh, that's the hose back into the engine. Um, so the cooling system's good. It, it's a custom radiator from CNR. I was lucky to work with some engineers there that uh, chose a nice core for me. Uh, the inner core is quite large. I think it's three inches thick. Um, it's a really good core. I think it's a Garrett core. It's been a while. I think I've had this in the car for a long time. MoCal oil cooler over there. This little trick I learned from TAD Motorsports, which is no longer, but they built some awesome early Evo rally cars, and they always had this little scoop on the side, and I thought it was so trick. Uh, so I, I've had that on there forever, pretty much. Uh, this year I've gone back to just a regular Evo 2 lip. I had this like air dam on here before, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth the weight. Uh, the extra weight of the urethane. Also, I got rid of the, the light air scoop. It's a pretty standard looking front end now, which I like. As I get older, I'm sort of going back to a real traditional Group A look. Uh, over here, we have Group A engine mounts, or transmission mounts, as you, as you might say. Um, I have most of them wire tied so they don't come loose. Since this is a Gallant transmission, uh, and I'll mention a little bit more about that later when I show you some spares. Uh, this bolts up to the Evo 3 a little bit different, or the Evo 1, 2, 3 a little bit different, so I had to make some modifications here uh, to make it all work. Uh, Cusco Master Cylinder Brace. Uh, these Evos can be known for a cracking firewall if you put a real heavy clutch in after a long time, so it's nice to put a brace on right when you get the car. Uh, boost control solenoid. Um, you can see down here if the camera picks it up, uh, unlike the regular transmission, all these linkages are in double shear instead of just a pin through one bracket. Uh, Bosch 1000cc injectors, custom wiring harness with pretty much all Deutsch stuff. There's air temp sensors up there as close as possible. Uh, this is the anti-lag kicker. I'm going to go to a different style kicker next time. This is a little reserve pot for the anti-lag uh, with a one-way valve. 
So you can switch the anti-lag on from inside the car. All the hoses are fire protected, uh, heat protected. So it's a pretty robust setup. And as you can see, uh, the alternator is on this side um, and there's no power steering pump. Another, another Group A engine mount. I think what they had done is they had modified this, so I uh, turned a spacer in here to, to fit that. So like the factory probably had a narrower uh, top. Uh, Tomei oil pressure, or sorry, fuel pressure uh, controller. That's really it. That's it. We got time top mounts on here. That's what I used before. They work well. It's nothing fancy. A lot of the gravel dampers that are really expensive don't use adjustable top mounts. They use inserts on the uh, upper strut bolt. Uh, but uh, but I didn't have those, so I did want it. You know, using it at the track and using it at hill climb, I do want some camber adjustment. I reintroduced this air tube to get the filter up higher this time. It's, I've had this in several different configurations over the years. I think it's going to stay like that. The red anodized stuff is an homage to Rally Art, but I would like to change it back to the original gray-looking valve cover. I think that's it. Hit me with questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer anything. Um, in the comments if you have questions in there uh, thanks for for looking I guess I'll show you a couple more things here before we part ways um, a couple tech inspection stickers from the famous Mount Washington uh, I don't know where the 2011 one is but that's pretty cool the cars got really good history um, this is a poem from Jim Daniels called factory love uh, it's about falling in love with a machine and I thought I would put that on here and to do that uh, I asked the poet's permission uh, and he, he gave it to me and after that it's a pretty cool story this car was featured in Poets and Writers magazine um, it's the first time they'd ever featured a race car and, uh, it was kind of a neat moment to get appreciation from the author and I encourage you to look up that poem it's pretty cool so that's it uh, this car might be for sale someday I might move on to a different project so if there's anyone interested in a special race car with a lot of history, uh, maybe we can talk after uh, this next climb to the clouds and uh, get together. Thanks. Talk soon. See ya. All right, everyone. Here are some of the spares that I've laid out. Uh, I've been cleaning them today, I'm trying to take an inventory and reorganize. I want to give you guys an idea of uh, what it takes to run a race car and what kind of parts you can accumulate over uh, 20 years of ownership almost. Um, start with the most boring stuff here. Here's some stuff I always take to the track with me, uh, especially a larger event, which I uh, want to uh, guard and ensure against failure. Just lots of hoses. Uh, I try not to buy the Chinese stuff on eBay. I stick to Venair uh, and Samco for the most part. Um, some metal zip ties these are always come in handy for everything axle boots that are broken uh, you name it lots of an hose some of these are pre-terminated just in case i need something if it's too long i'll loop it uh, it's always handy you know the idea you put put all this money into getting to an event and uh, all this time and preparation and it would be such a shame to have something as stupid as a hose break and then put you out after a couple practice runs so this is boring stuff but it's really important uh, next bin here, uh, cam angle sensor, or crank angle sensor, people like to call them both, really, they're all connected with the belt, so it doesn't matter. Um, spare coil pack, I try to keep these in boxes and keep them dry. Uh, lots of hose clamps, some double sided 3M tape, this is some miscellaneous stuff in here, a new radiator cap. Uh, it's really nice to have like the hose clamps on hand, uh, seal that shouldn't be in here. Um, Another set of fresh plugs, uh, clutch alignment tool. I've got two spare fuel pumps. Um, as I spoke about earlier, the Evo's got a Walboro in tank and then a uh, Bosch external. Uh, this is a spare Walboro and a spare Bosch in here. I've got both covered. This is sort of interesting, this project. Uh, this is an Evo diff case in here. It's been uh, blasted and repainted. Uh, these are all the parts necessary to change the final drive ratio um, for the track. So uh, front and rear, uh, it's got rear diff parts and front uh, diff parts for transmission. Uh, you could 
get presumably taller gears if you wanted to do this project. This is something I started like 15 years ago and I just boxed it. Uh, some of the tracks like Watkins Glen, um, Thunder, Thunderbolt in uh, New Jersey, I was hitting the rev limiter on the straight. So I thought that if I was going to keep doing a lot of track events in the Evo, that uh, what I would do is build a spare transmission, uh, build a spare rear diff, and uh, swap them out when I had a track event, time attack. This seemed like a lot of work. Again, more transmission parts, uh, spare VCU, spare end cover, uh, sort of boring stuff. Here's some interesting stuff. These are all Mitsu parts, all hard to find now. Um, seals, uh, throttle body gasket, a lot of rally art sport parts for CE9A, which are super hard to find. Uh, pillow ball, uh, rear arm, upper arm stuff, uh, lower arm bush kit, uh, all rally art. Um, here's a Group A engine mount. I bought a bunch of Group A parts years ago and I didn't end up using that spare. Um, throw out bearings of different types uh, for rally art box. Uh, spare clutch discs, you never know. Spare shifter housing, this hasn't been restored yet. You can see it's a little bit rusty, but uh, it's always good to have. It can easily be sandblasted and sprayed, uh, refinished. Stuff like this, you know, it's gonna be 10 years down the road from now, it might be hard to find. So every now and then I see something uh, online, I try to pick it up if it's cheap. Here's another rear diff, this one's been restored and pickled, sealed up on the ends. Uh, fresh bolts everywhere. It's got fluid in it. Um, a nice LSD. You know, if you're at the track or at a hill climb and you're launching the car and you break it, great to have a spare. So, uh, also when I put a spare in, I want to just be able to leave it in and repair the broken one. So, I try to restore uh, the spares so they can just be left in and they're in good shape. Uh, this interesting one here. This is a. Uh, uh, Compressor housing with a 40 millimeter restrictor on it. My friend Ryan made me this uh, restrictor a long time ago. Um, the first climb to the clouds in 2011 required a 40 millimeter. Uh, this is for a Garrett uh, 3076R. So this is uh, another nice piece. It's always good to have depending on what kind of events you're doing. Uh, spare center section 3076. You know the turbo is a little dated now in the car. There's a lot better ones out there. But uh, I have the spare and I have the one in the car, it's working great, so, you know, just continue with this one for now. The car makes plenty of power. Uh, spare tie rods, always great to have. Starters, I don't know why I have two, but I just do. Here's a quick slip-on muffler I made. Uh, just clamps on the standard Pleasure Evo exhaust. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it will take it down to under 100 pretty well, 100 decibels. Uh, a couple of the hill climbs in Vermont uh, require that. A couple transfer cases, these aren't super cleaned up or anything, but they're both the right one for the Evo. These are getting expensive. It's nice to have a couple that I didn't spend much on. Tail lights, um, I don't know how I ended up with those. It's good to have. Really important for hill climbs. Knock on wood, I've never broken an axle in my car. Uh, these are OEM. Uh, they're restored with fresh boots. I have this like really sweet uh, military ammo case that they live in and they're all uh, sealed up from water so all four ready to go just in case one breaks. I've got two spare crankshafts as I mentioned earlier the Evo is six bolt now uh, these are both six bolt crankshafts these are OEM I don't think I'll ever use them but it's nice to have. Uh, this right here is a kit that uh, Bill made me uh, this uh, allows, it's like an alignment jig so you can make uh, new rear control arms because these are custom. Uh, so this uh, is a press kit and an alignment kit so you can uh, remake the custom parts. Shift cables, always good to have in case you break one. Never done it, but just in case. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Evo, been, or the Evo has been updated to uh, Evo 8 style suspension. Uh, the front end's a little different now. Uh, the last iteration is more Evo 6. These struts fit, fit that last iteration. Uh, these are Olin's adjustable. These are gabs. This is a, a pretty actually great set of spare uh, suspension, especially for New England hill climb. Uh, you could probably still win on this. Um, 
it's good to have if you send the RSSPs out for service and you want to be able to use the car or you want to be able to roll the car around or if you're in an event and you bend something you can put, put this stuff in knowing it's not junk and uh, finish the event. I also have a six bolt uh, block over on an engine stand um, that's uh, ready to go. It's never been honed so standard bore still and uh, that could be put into use anytime. Last but definitely not least, the rare stuff. This is a Rally Art dog box. This is a magnesium case. You can probably tell the hue of green the camera's picking up on. Uh, you've also probably never seen this part number here. Let's get that to focus. So this is a Clubman Group A spec uh, built by Rally Art Germany and uh, it looks a lot like the standard W5M all-wheel drive transmission with a few exceptions. Get a breather port here. You get some extra drain ports on it. Uh, extra breathers. This is a uh, dual shear shift linkage instead of one, so it's a lot more robust. Uh, of course, the case is magnesium. These are helically cut gears in here, but the gear angle is a little more shallow for strength than the standard gearbox, so it's a little louder. Uh, the gears are wider. Uh, it's still a five speed. Again, it's a dog box. The input shaft is the same diameter and spline type as Evo 8, so a lot thicker, more robust. The case is quite thick too. So these are super rare. Uh, the factory uh, used the Hollinger. Uh, but if you were a high-paying customer that wanted a factory-built car, this is probably what you'd get if you had a Galant VR4 uh, in the late 80s. Um, so there's one of these in the car now, and then this is a spare that's freshly rebuilt, never been used. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments, and I'll uh, try to answer them as best I can.